Hello and welcome to the Google Analytics tutorial series. I'm Matt Landers, and in this tutorial, we're going to implement a recommended event. Now, events are the cornerstone of Google Analytics. They're essentially actions that are happening by our users on our website or in our app. Those actions are then processed and aggregated by GA and made available to us in reports. Now, most of these events are automatically collected for us, like when a user visits a web page or when they click a link. But some events require additional context in order to be recorded, which requires us to do a little bit of configuration or add some code to our website in order for them to be recorded. So let's think about a purchase event. If somebody purchased something on your website, you also want to know what was purchased, how many of them were purchased, and how much were they purchased for, so then we can report on that data in GA. There's also one more other category of event, which we're not going to cover in this tutorial, but we will in the next, and that's a custom event which are events that are specific to you and your business and not already known by Google Analytics itself. All right, now that we know what events are, let's jump over to our demo website and implement a recommended event. Let's go. Okay, we're back on our demo website where we've already configured Google Analytics. And now what we wanna do is start tracking different events that are happening that aren't automatically collected by GA itself. All right, so what I've done is I've added a new button to the site that's just a tweet button. So if we go ahead and click that, let's see what happens. It'll take us out to Twitter. It'll pre-fill a tweet for us that just says, hello analytics and GA4 tutorial series. So if you do run this series and you run this code, it would be cool if you actually tweeted this so we would know that people were going through this series and using it. Uh, but what we wanna do is we wanna check and see when people are clicking the tweet button and track that in Google Analytics. So the share event is built into GA. It's a recommended event, but we have to do something to make sure that we let GA know that, hey, someone tried to share something on my website. So we're gonna configure that right now. Okay, now we're in Google Tag Manager. In previous video, we already configured Google Analytics. So our website is already collecting automatically collected events, like page views, scroll events, link clicks, things like that. But the share event, we can't automatically collect because we don't know based on different websites when someone's sharing and when they're not. So we need to tell Google Tag Manager to fire a GA4 event whenever someone clicks that tweet button. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is learn a little bit about that tweet button so then we can configure that in Google Tag Manager so that it's fired whenever somebody clicks it. So let's jump over to our code and look at the website real quick. Okay, we're in Visual Studio Code and we're on our homepage. And you'll see right here that we have that tweet button. Now we just wanna make note of one thing. We need to figure out what makes this button unique so that we can tell Google Tag Manager that we only wanna fire a share event whenever this particular button is clicked. So we'll look and we'll see that our button has this class on it, a CSS class, Twitter share button. So we're gonna remember that when we're in Google Tag Manager and we wanna make sure that anytime the, the Twitter share button is clicked, that we fire off a GA4 event. So let's jump back over to Google Tag Manager and configure. Okay, before we can create our tag for our event firing, we need to configure one thing in GTM first so that we're collecting the class name off of the click events and we can use that to set up our event. So let's go over to variables. We go to configure for our built-in variables and we'll scroll down and we'll see click classes, we need to select that. And what that just tells GTM, like, hey, collect all the classes on the elements that I click so that I can use that in my events and triggers. All right, we'll close that, we'll go back over to our tags, and now we're gonna set up that tag. So we click new, we're gonna name this something relevant, we'll call it GA4 event, it's a share event, and we're gonna make this specifically for Twitter. And you'll see why in a minute. All right, so we're going to click uh, to add a new tag and we're going to choose the GA4 event. Now, when we come in here, we're just going to select on the configuration our website. You should only have one here. If you have a more complex setup, maybe you have multiple. But you want to choose the website where the click event is happening. And then we're going to choose the event name. Now, Google Analytics has a series of recommended events and one of them is the share event and it's literally just share. And then we go to our event parameters and we're gonna add one row here and we're gonna put method in the value Twitter. 
Now what that does is tell Google Analytics that not only was there a share event, but it's actually a share to Twitter event. And that's why we named this specifically the GA4 event share Twitter. Because uh, we could put Facebook and other social media platforms in here so that we can see that in our reports in Google Analytics and find out where our users are sharing our content the most. Okay, that's all we have to do to set up the event, but we also need to trigger it whenever that button is clicked. So we're gonna go down to our triggers, we're gonna click edit, we're gonna add a new trigger, and we're gonna call this our click and Twitter share. All right, we will add a new one, and we're gonna do only on just links. If you scroll down, you'll see click and then just links, and we only wanna do it for some links. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell GTM what links it should actually recognize as a Twitter share event, and you'll see when we click here, we now have that click classes from the variables that we set up available to us. And we just wanna say, we wanna find the one that contains Twitter share button. And we'll save that. We'll save our event. Now, before we actually publish this and make it live on our site, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and preview it. So within Google Tag Manager, we can just click preview. And that'll open up a new tab with our a tag assistant running. Now you might need to install a Chrome extension for a Google Tag Assistant uh, that will allow you to debug this, but it's really important that you do this before you push something live to make sure it's working the way you expected. All right, you're just gonna put in your URL here. For us, we're working on localhost because we're testing this out, but you could also point this to your live site as well and see what's happening there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click connect. And that's gonna open up another window that has our debug information in it. And then also a window to our website. Now in here we can click around and we can do things and see what happens within Google Tag Manager in that debug window. So what we wanna do is we wanna click the tweet button and we'll just close this out. And we'll go back over to the tab that has the tag assistant and we'll see all of the events that were fired. Uh, you can just take note of the container loaded and fires our GA4 configuration. So this is from our initial setup of getting GA running. We can see that that actually ran. And then we'll see this link click here. Now on this link click, you'll see that our tag actually fired. The GA4 event share Twitter event fired. And we want to make sure that fired on the right place. And the way we can do that is to expand this API call. And we'll see that the class Twitter share button is actually part of that event that was sent in. So this is great news. That means that the share event fired at the time that we expected. So now we can go ahead and publish those changes in Google Tag Manager and go to our live website and see if we're getting share events showing up. All right, let's jump over to our website, run a test, and we'll go into Google Analytics. Okay, we're back on our live website, not the debug environment. And one thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you refresh the page so that you pull down that new Google Tag Manager container that has the new version in it that has that share event. And then we just wanna click our tweet button to make sure we fire that event. And then we'll jump over into Google Analytics and see if that event is firing. All right, so if we go over to Analytics on our site, we're gonna to go to Reports, we go to Real Time. And if we scroll down and to the right, we'll see that we now see a share event in addition to the automatically collected events. So we have the click events, the scroll events, page view events, but we also have this share event. So this is really good news. That means everything that we set up within Google Tag Manager is now working and firing as we expected on our live site. And hopefully this gives you a good understanding of how to set up events with Google Tag Manager on your own website. And then in future videos, we're gonna do custom events. So this is a recommended event, which is one that Google Analytics provides for you, but you can also have events that are specific to you and your business needs. That way you can get that data into Google Analytics and report off that as well. So I'll see you in a future video. In the meantime, happy measuring.